Shalom, Most High in Christ, blessed. This is Israel United in Christ, and I am Captain Zakai, and I'm here with Officer Ira. And today we're doing another episode of 15 Minutes with the Captain. So today's topic is going to be Judgment Day or the Day of the Lord. What's going to happen when Christ returns? That Judgment Day. What's actually going to happen? This is what everybody wants to know. So we're going to start off with this. Give me our uh, Second Ezra, chapter 13. Verse 29. And we're going to read from 29 through 34. So y'all bear with us and let's read together. Come on. The book of 2 Ezra 13 and verse 29. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. Come on. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. And one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against the other, one people against the other. And one realm against another. Right there, what you're hearing about is a world war. You have one people fighting against another. One city against another. One realm against another. This is the world war that's going to happen at some point in time. We don't know exactly when, but it's coming. Read. And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass. And the signs shall happen which I showed thee before. And then shall my son be declared, whom thou sawest as a man ascending. When do we see Christ because it's the most high saying, then you will see my son ascending, right? When do we see that? In the book of what? In the book of Acts chapter 1, when we see Christ go up into what? Into the chariot, right? Read on. And when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle. They have one against the other. Uh-huh. Come on. And an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them willing to come and to overcome him. By fighting. You see that? So the war, the world war, is going to be what? These cities and these countries fighting against each other. But then when they see Christ coming back, what's going to happen? They're going to stop fighting each other and then what? Fight against the Lord. And you're going to say, how are they going to do this? Because the Lord is coming in with what? With an army. That's what y'all never understood. It's not going to be him just coming floating back. You understand? Okay. We got to understand how Christ is going to come back to the earth. Okay, this is not going to be a game. This ain't no hugs and kisses doctrine. All right, this is the real deal, the day of the Lord. Read that. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 3 and verse 16. When I heard, my belly trembled. My lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones, mm -hmm. and I trembled in myself, that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up, when he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them. With his troops. He will invade them with his troops. The Lord is coming with his troops. Where do we see that at? Is that what? Just uh, some fantasy? Give me Isaiah chapter 31. You know what I want out of there. Because the scriptures say that he shall invade them with the troops. Who? The ones that was fighting in the world war. The book of Isaiah chapter 31 and verse 5. As birds flying. Read that again. As birds flying, Come on. so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it. And passing over, he will preserve it. Ah. As birds flying, how do birds fly? In that V formation. Okay, that's how the Lord is coming back with his chariots. As birds flying. That's why the Lord is doing what? He will invade them with his troops. That's what the scripture said. So when Christ comes back with all the host of angels, it's not to come and start hugging people and saying, oh, God is love. No, that's not going to happen. First, some people got to get laid down and put to death. This is what it is, a war on the earth. Because remember, the last time Christ was on earth, he went out what? With his pierced hands. He was getting stabbed by a sword on the side. They were giving him a vinegar. He was holding back. He didn't fight. Watch this. Isaiah 47 and verse 3. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. That's the sins. Your nakedness is uncovered. Now your shame is uncovered. Meaning what? All, all you nations, all you Israelites who are not keeping the laws, statutes, all right, commandments, all your shame is being uncovered. Plus the other nations. Read. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. Come on. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. I will take vengeance, and I will what? And I will not meet thee as a man. The Lord said, I'm not going to meet you as a man. I'm going to meet you as what? God. That's what's happening. The, the, the real true Christ is who you're going to meet. Is there anything else on that? That's it. All right. Now give me Isaiah chapter 9. The Lord is telling you, I'm not going to meet you as a man. 
It ain't going to be no beating me on the back, putting a crown of thorns on, on, on my head, m making me bleed and, and all of that, ripping my beard out. No, that ain't happening this time. I will not meet you as a man. Come on. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise mm. and garments rolled in blood. Stop. Because when you when you know, like, uh, like say, the Braveheart. That battle scene, those battle scenes in Braveheart, there was nothing but what? Noise, confused noise, people stabbing each other, blood all over their garments. Read. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. But this, this what? This battle, this war is not going to be like that. It's going to be with what? But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. And fuel. Come on. I Isaiah 54 and verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith. Stop. Behold, I have created the smith. What is the smith? Read on. That bloweth the coals in the fire. So a smith back then was the, was the guy, a man, who did what? He made weapons. He made swords. And what he would do was take that metal, bang on it, and they'd be blowing in the fire to keep that fire hot. And that's how he created weapons. So the Lord said, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. Come on. And that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. Uh-huh. And I have created the waster to destroy. The waster to destroy. So what is he talking about here? The waster, what we're going to find out is what? The nuclear weapons of war. We're going to show you that. But guess what? That Smith, that's the scientist. A lot of you think, man, these scientists, they sure are smart. The Most High created them. You understand? The Most High created them just for this. To build up America and, and these other nations into what? A superpower, as they like to call themselves. So when what? When the Lord comes back and he defeats them, then you're going to know that you, it takes a God to defeat this place. And that he's the true power. Give me Psalms 91. Because I want to get to something right here. It says, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and bringeth forth an instrument for his work. Meaning what? A weapon. And I have created the waster to destroy. Let's find that out. Give me Psalms. I told you Psalms 91, right? Yes, sir. All right, come on, come on. Verse 4? Yeah, if you got it. Read. Psalms 91 and verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, mm. and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, mm. nor for the arrow that flies by day. The arrow is what? A missile. You find that out in any, if any of you been in the service or the military or even watched a couple of movies, you know that the arrow is another word for a missile. Read. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Come on. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. That does what? That, that wasteth at noonday. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. You understand that? So what? What are we talking about? We just read in Isaiah 54 about the waster. Now you have what? That wasteth at noonday. What? That destruction. That's your nuclear weapons. Brothers and sisters, that's the nuclear weapons. Yes, there's going to be a nuclear war. Don't think that all these peace treaties and, oh no, they're no longer going to build it. What do you think these nuclear weapons are for? What do you think they're for? Just for looks? The Most High got them there for a reason. You understand me? C continue reading. Read on. A thousand shall fall at thy side uh -huh. and ten thousand at thy right hand. So when this happens now, when these bombs drop, a thousand going to die on one side, ten thousand on the other. Read. But it shall not come nigh thee. Mm. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Only with thy eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because those of you that are keeping the law, statutes, and commandments and walking and living as an Israelite, you're not going to get touched during that day. You're going to see this thing happen and you're going to be what? Saved from that. That's what the term saved means. Saved from the destruction to come. You understand me? This is what it's talking about. Give me the book of First Peter chapter 4 and verse 18. Okay? That's why the Lord says this. Because even during this day, you're going to be afraid when this time comes. You think nuclear weapons are going to be dropping all over? You know, yeah, you might know that you've been walking correctly, but you're still going to have a little bit of fear. Read that. First Peter 4 and verse 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved. You see that? If the righteous scarcely be saved. Because you're going to be there, but what? You're not going to get touched, but you're going to be in the midst of it. Come on. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? <laughs> Burning in that fire. 
That's why it's called the lake of fire. It's talking about the nuclear weapons that's going to come to destroy the earth. Not no hell in the ground with the devil in a pitchfork. That doesn't exist. The lake of fire is the nuclear war that's going to happen here in America. Destroyed. You understand me? Come on. Okay, brothers and sisters, the Bible has all the answers. A lot of you are saying, damn, what's going to happen? How, how is this going to go down? A nuclear weapon, a nuclear war is going to happen. So those of you who are running around scared now and, 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 and hearing my voice, you might be saying, no, these guys don't know what they're talking about, so I don't care. I'm feeling good. Go ahead. Live it out. Those of you who want to be saved and run with the Lord, understand what's going to happen and get yourself correct. And then you're going to see the reward of the wicked. Come on. The book of Zechariah, chapter 14 and verse 12. Come on. And this shall be the plague. Wherewith the Lord will smite all the people. You see that? It's being called the plague. Read on. That have fought okay. against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall be consumed. Excuse me. Their flesh shall consume away while they while they stand upon their feet. Wow. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. Come on. And their tongue shall be consumed away in their mouth. Are you listening to that, brothers and sisters? Does this sound like something sweet? When you see uh uh images of nuclear uh how can i say nuclear war right now the country the, the world has never seen that per se but they know what's going to happen for instance you can see a movie called terminator i believe it's terminator 2 and in that movie when the nuclear bomb drops you see everybody actually getting vaporized exactly like the scripture the eyes are going back and their head tongues burned out all the flesh come right off their bones and you just see the skeleton standing there where you think they're getting that from they understand what's going to happen that's why the Lord put this in here for us to do what? As a clue to know that when that nuclear weapon drops, that's how you're going out. That's how it's happening. The movies know about it, so y'all need to know about it. They're showing you every... The Most High Christ is showing you what's going to happen when these bomb drops. What, how, how it even got to that point. Again, countries are fighting in a world war. Christ shows up. They stop fighting each other, start fighting Christ. Then they do what? They start launching weapons. What do you think? Weapons are to be launched They think they're killing uh, Christ and the angels with that But no, it will not happen Read that Isaiah 34 and verse 4 Come on And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll mm. And all their hosts shall fall down As the leaf fall off from the vine And as a falling fig from the fig tree Right So the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll When you when you see the that Mushroom, that nuclear mushroom. That's what you're looking at. The heavens are starting to scroll and do what? And all their hosts shall fall down. What is the host? All of their helicopters, planes, satellites, all of that. All that's dropping to the ground. All of that is dropping to the ground. Come on. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine. Come on. And as the falling fig from the fig tree. Come on. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. My sword shall be bathed in heaven. Not the heaven where the most high is at. In the what? The government system. That's the heaven. You understand? My sword going to be bathed in that. The Lord said he's going to bathe his sword right in the what? In the heaven. And guess who that is? Read on. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. Who? It shall come down upon Idumia. The word Idumia is Greek for Edom, which is what? The so-called white man today. He is from the nation of Edom. He, him and his people are the Edomites. They do what? They run the world today. And the Lord said what? I'm going to bathe my sword in heaven in what? In Idumia. Letting you notice the so-called white man, this is his day of reckoning. Read on. And upon the people of my curse to judgment. You see that? The people of my curse to judgment. Give me verse 8. Verse 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. You see that? That's what judgment day is. The day of the Lord's vengeance. Read. And the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. What is the controversy of Zion? The controversy of Zion is that the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians are the true Israelites. But what? They're being hidden. Lied on. Right? That is the controversy. A controversy is in the land of Israel where you have the so-called Edomites with something and then the so-called Arabs with another part of the land. The Lord said this is a controversy and they must pay. Read. Verse 9. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, mm. and the dust thereof into brimstone, mm. and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. And the land thereof will become burning pitch. Man. Give me 2 Peter's, man. Chapter 3 and verse 10. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. There's a lot. 
It's a lot going on here, brothers and sisters. You will learn today. You will learn. Come on. Verse 10. Yes, sir. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Read that part again, please. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. When a thief is coming in the night, do you know that he's coming? The answer is no. If you knew the thief was coming, you would have kept lights on and everything to let him know, hey, I'm home, don't rob my house. But the Lord is coming in the thief of the, uh, the Lord is coming back as a thief in the night, meaning you don't know when he's coming. Read. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, mm. and the elements shall mer melt with fervent heat. You see that? The elements shall melt with a fervent heat. You understand that? Read on. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Burned up. Read on. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? That's why what, brothers and sisters? You now have this time to repent. This is your grace period. That's what it means. For all you Christians out there, grace period means what? You have an opportunity to get yourself correct. Okay? If your bill is due on the first, and then what? You have a grace period on the fifth. You have five days to pay that bill. After that, you're getting penalized. Right now, this is the grace period. You best be coming up with that bread. Or after this, you're going to pay this penalty right here. Read on. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The Lord had to come back and say it again. And when, you're talk when we're talking about heaven out of these scriptures, it's talking about what? The ruling government. That's what it's talking about. All right. Revelations 18 and verse 8. Therefore shall her place come in one day, death and mourning. You see that death and mourning. These are the plagues. Remember we read that scripture earlier about the plague is coming. Death and mourning. Come on. And famine. Mm. And she shall be utterly burned with fire. She shall be utterly burnt with fire. Read on. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Mm. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and living deliciously with her right. shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Right. So all the kings of the earth, all of the different governments that have done what? Eat and live deliciously with who? We're going to find out. Read. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, the mighty city. For in one hour is thy judgment come. So after the Lord invades Babylon with what? With his troops. One hour is going to take to burn the whole country down. Who is Babylon? Babylon is America. You might be saying, wait a minute. I think this brother's just making that up. Give me the book of Psalms chapter 137. You know what I want out of there, right? We're going to prove to you who Babylon is. So there's no discussion about it. Because in Isaiah, uh, I believe it's 47, we read about Idumia. Is that, is that the scripture? We read yep. about no. Was that the right one? I'm sorry, but uh, when we just when we read about Idumia being what that the Lord's sword shall be bathed in Idumia, remember that. That's what we're gonna find out now. Who Babylon? Because now it's being called Babylon. Is Babylon Idumia? Is Babylon Edom? Let's find out. Come on. Psalms 137 and verse seven. Come on. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Come on. In the day of Jerusalem. Come on. Who saith, raise it, raise it. Even to the foundation thereof. Right. So the, the children of what? Of Edom was saying, destroy Israel, destroy Israel, destroy Jerusalem. Read on. O daughter of Babylon. You see that? O daughter of Babylon. Edom is being called Babylon. That's another name for Edom. For what? For, pu for future prophecy. Edom is known as Babylon. Read on. Who ought to be destroyed. Who ought to be destroyed. That's what we read in here in Revelation 18. Come on. Happy shall he be. That reward thee as thou hast served us. Mm. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Right. Because Edom has to pay for all that wickedness they did. When they went all around the world, it, around the northern kingdom, and took the babies and smashed them, uh, smashed their heads against the, uh, uh, the stones. This is what the Lord is saying, that we're going to be happy when this is recompensed to them. You understand that? Revelation chapter 9 and verse 16. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000,000. 000, 
and I heard the number of them. You see that? 200,000 thousand. What is that? 2 million? 200 million? Hmm. I don't know the number, but the number's serious, mm. all right? The number's humongous. And what? When they talk about the horsemen, they coming in on chariots, brothers and sisters. Not the chariots you're thinking about, okay? We're talking about the so-called, which y'all know as UFOs, or unidentified flying objects. In the Bible, they're identified. They're called chariots, okay? They're called chariots. We're going to prove that to you right now. Isaiah 31 and verse 5. As birds flying, mm. so would the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it, and passing over it, he will preserve it. Right, and passing over it, he will preserve it, right? Because what? He's defending the Israelites. When did this ever happen in history? The Lord had to set it back up again. Remember, America is known as what? Egypt, or spiritual Egypt in the Bible. So let's go back to when Israel was actually in Egypt in the book of Exodus chapter 14. Let me show y'all something. The same thing happened there. But in the book, oh, in, in that, in that uh, what's the name of that movie? Ten Commandments, they don't show you this part. They either don't want to show you or didn't understand. Exodus 14 and verse 24. And it came to pass that in the morning, watch the Lord looketh unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of the fire. Right, it says, and it came to pass that in the morning watch. Right, I'm sorry. Right, come on. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians to the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. Right. When it talks about the pillar of fire and, and of the cloud, the cloud here is talking about what? Uh, uh, a chariot, a ship. Because you always find out, remember, it said that uh, the cloud was going to be what? A pillar of smoke in the day and a pillar of fire at night. I forgot the, right. uh, the connotation. Fire by night. Fire by night and uh, what was it in the day? Uh, cloud in the day. I'm messing it up, brothers and sisters, but the bottom line is talking about a chariot. The whole time Israel was out there, this thing was always out there with them. Okay, but read on. Verse 25. And took off their chariot wheels. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's read that slow. It's, I'm going to go back to 24, bro. Just stay with me. That in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians. Meaning what? This is Christ. He was there looking at the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. So Christ stepped in and was what? Fighting for Israel and took off their chariot wheels. That's what's going on. Read. That they drave, excuse me, and took off their chariot wheels, that they drave them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. You see that? For the Lord fighteth against them against the Egyptians. You see that? So the same thing that happened back then is going to happen in the future on a larger scale, brothers and sisters. All right. Isaiah 66 and verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind mm. to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Do you see that? This is letting you know that the Lord is coming with what? With those chariots, family. Chariots were well, what? This is the day of vengeance. The day of vengeance. Give me Jeremiah chapter 16. Jeremiah 16 and verse 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, The Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. You see that? We're not going to be talking about how we... <clears throat> our exodus out of Egypt before. We're going to be talking about how the Lord's delivered us out of the land of the north, meaning what? North America. Why only North America? Because this is the place that's going to get destroyed. Not the whole world, but North America, United States of America. Read on. And from all the lands whither he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Mm. Read on. Behold, I will send for many fishers. I will send for many fishers to do what? Fish our people. Fishers of men. Y'all heard that when Christ spoke it. Come on. Say of the Lord, and they shall fish them. And they shall fish out those Israelites who are what? Who have been chosen. Read. And after. Then after that. Come on. Will I send for many hunters. Many hunters. Now what? Israel will become the hunter. Okay? Because when Christ first touches down, he's going to be the one doing all the damage. Then the rest of Israel is going to join in. Were we ready? Come on. 
and they shall and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. Right. Because so called Idumeans are gonna be trying to hide in what? Hide in the clefts of the rocks and everywhere else. And what? They're gonna be getting hunted. You understand what I'm saying? Matter of fact, let me give y'all one more scripture and we're gonna end it off. Give me the book of Habakkuk, chapter two. All right, so give me the book of Malachi, chapter four and verse one. Read. Malachi four and verse one. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, mm. and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, save the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. They're going to be burned up from, the, from head to toe. That's, what, that's what's known as getting toe up. <laughs> you understand? From the head to the toe, from the root, no root, no branches, no nothing. Burn. Habakkuk chapter 2 eight. and verse 8. Because thou hast spoiled many nations. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, Esau. Come on. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. Because of man's blood and for the violence of the land, of the city and of all that dwell therein. Woe to him that co covereth an evil covetousness to his house, mm. that, he may rest, for, that he may set his nest on high. That he may be delivered from the power of evil. Right. Because right now, what do you see? Oh, United States is trying to go into outer space and do what? Put a, a, a space station on Mars and the moon and all these different places they want to go. Why do you think they're trying to leave planet Earth? They have planet, they have the moon cut up and sold to different people as real estate. That they're going to go live there. Why do you think they're doing that? Read verse 9 again. Woe to him that covereth an evil covetousness to his house. Right, because that evil covetousness is the theft, the murder, the rape of the Israelites, the destruction when he even came over here to the Western Hemisphere. Read on. That he may set his nest on high. His nest on high is talking about outer space. You read about that in the book of Obadiah. Read. That he may be delivered from the power of evil. That he may get saved from the nuclear weapons that are going to drop, but it's not going to happen. He's going to experience every level of it. You understand? So that is what is known as the day of the judgment, day of judgment or the or, or the Lord's day of vengeance. So this is a short version of that. So all praise to the most high. We hope you get something out of it. OK, and we will what exhort you to go to IsraelUnite.org or go to YouTube. IUIC any videos you see on or on YouTube, just type in IUIC and get what? Get more knowledge. So I'm Captain Zakai. With Officer Ira, and we say Shalom, Most High in Christ bless. Shalom. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us.
more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.